You, you impacted so many people's lives with your career. Um, I know at the time you probably couldn't grasp it, but all these years later, I, I hope that you do. I hope you Thank understand you. how much uh, you meant and how many people you shaped. I Thank you. Many of us, when we started, had no idea that if you were able to find all this different memorabilia and you know be able to get it in a, in a central location, that people would find that yeah. fascinating and want to walk through and, and, and see all of that. Obviously, you're one of the guys at the top of the list. Um, yeah. Well, when... that's because I'm the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I've yeah. lost more memorabilia. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK. That's true. Well, no, but I was going to say, look, it just has some of the most iconic memorabilia okay. of all time. When you think of the Nature Boy Ric Flair, you think about the long streaming ropes. Put that camera on us. Can you get something to show them what's happening right here? You know, a lot of guys wore robes. A lot of guys wore fancy robes. They didn't kind of do it the way that Rick did. If you close your eyes and say woo, you can literally envision Ric Flair strutting around in one of those shiny robes. Of the dozens of robes that he's worn in his career, we actually only have one at the warehouse. The WWE actually purchased this robe off of Rick several years ago, and it's been a prized jewel and possession of the WWE archives for several years. And, uh, there are obviously so many of them uh, to choose from, but we're gonna do what we can to, to boil this down to maybe just a couple. Um, Star King, 1983, that was in the time, yeah. you know? This was 18,000 people going out of their mind. It's the first significant event I've ever been in. To be the world champion was a big deal back then, really big. The one match that everybody has been eyeing, Harley Race going up against Ric Flair. Who you think going this thing, darling? Ric Flair! We all know that the biggest show in WWE is WrestleMania, and that always has been. But back in the day, before Rick was in WWE, he was in NWA, and their version of WrestleMania was Starcade. And in the first ever Starcade in 1983, an up and coming Ric Flair shocked the world and dethroned the king, Harley Race, and became the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He's got him down one, two, three. He did it. He did it. That title made Ric Flair the man, and that's why that robe is what we're looking for. I am so proud of, like, him being my father. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. like, the pressure to live up to that name, what it does do is it makes me work harder. This up here, I think, is uh, Wes Potter's house. Conrad said he has a bunch of you know, cool memorabilia, some related to Rick, so maybe he has the butterfly robe? <laughs> My mom has it hiding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're coming. Oh. Yeah, you hide there. West. Hey, AJ. AJ, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. I have a nice surprise. Nice to meet you. OK. Whoa! Hi. <laughs> that is a surprise. <laughs> the queen. Nice yeah. to meet you, sir. How are you? Hi. Wow. Good, how are you? So uh, here you got a hell of a collection. Yeah, come on. I first became a wrestling fan during the height of the Monday Night Wars. There was a lot of great matches and characters on television, and the first one that really caught my eye during that period was Ric Flair. Whether he's performing or not, there's something that draws you to him, that charisma. And that's when I really was hooked and, and really became a wrestling collector. So this is it. Wow. wow. Steamboat's jacket. Yep, that's from his old gym in Charlotte. That's a Jerry the King Lawler autographed crown. Nice. And the boots with the crown on top of them are actually uh, Harley races from WrestleMania 3 against JYD. That's history right there. I've never seen it in person. Yep, that's it. <laughs> There's a lot of history there. He actually wore it in 81 in his first world title match, and notably at a Starcade 83 there it is. against Harley Race. From Charlotte, North Carolina, ladies and gentlemen, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Our next event of the evening is a cage match, one ball with a 60 minute time limit. Harley Race was the toughest guy in our business, and everybody knew it. You could not socialize with him in a bar without him letting everybody in the bar know that he was the world champion. Harley was 
the guy. And he was the poster child for the legitimacy of this thing as a sport. Here it is, Starrcade 83, a flare for the goal. He was the real world champion. Harley Race knew that this was going to be the match of his life right here. Winning the title would mean everything. Flair is putting it to him. This is before WWE, the NWA was it. If you were the NWA world champion, you were in a good place. That was the title. It's just this iconic match that signifies really Rick reaching the mountaintop. Up on the top rope. For one of the first times. Rick Flair has done what many people consider to be impossible. After 83, there's no stopping him. Rick is on top for the rest of his life. So that robe signifies those first world championship wins on top of the fact that it's beautiful. And it would be really, really great to have that in the collection. This is Olivia Walker? Olivia Walker, yeah. Oh, man. They're so thick. Can you imagine putting all that on by hand? She put all that stuff on by hand, I know. one by one. The details on this robe are incredible. This like, hasn't been touched since 83. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, long live the queen. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Got a little weight to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, mine are this heavy, though. Got some portraits. Who would have ever thought? Oh, and I like the old school. Yeah, the nature boy. Nature yeah. boy. Woo. Oh, here we go. I actually, now that I'm seeing his old boots, I'm like, oh, I want boots done like that. Those are actually the um, the boots that he was wearing uh, the night that he won the Royal Rumble in 92. Which is the same exact I robe. some good luck for this Rumble yeah. this year. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. These go along with the black butterfly robe that Rick wore at Royal Rumble 1992 when he won the WWE title. For 25 years, I have looked for it also. And there has been no mention of any wow. inkling of anywhere to start. We don't know where it's at, where it's been. Multiple collectors in a network that's cast a pretty wide net can't come up with what happened to this, one of the all-time iconic pieces of his memorabilia. I wouldn't know, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I wish I did. I'd probably have it here. So those black and red boots that Ric Flair wore at the Royal Rumble might be the closest thing we'll ever get to that butterfly robe or to capturing that moment. So having something like those boots to represent that moment would also be huge. I think an exhibit that has these Ric Flair boots, hopefully the butterfly robe, and then with an old vintage Ric Flair robe right next to it. It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> these boots and this robe. How about $60,000? No. No. Do you have a, a figure in mind? You know, I've, I've had everything just for so long now. It means so much. It, I think I have to, I think I have to keep them here. In the world of collectibles, Ric Flair robes definitely hold a mecca position. To own one of those robes is to own a piece of history. It almost single-handedly catapults you from being a civilian and a fan to now being almost inside of this wonderful world of professional wrestling. I understand um, being attached to memorabilia. Like, I have my dad's watch from when he retired. Yep. I don't know if anyone could ever take this off my wrist. But what about a loan agreement? So what if WWE was able to display the boots and the robe for like, certain a period of time and then deliver it right back to your front door. Front door. Maybe even give you a plaque that says owned by West Potter. Just so, you know, we know how much these things mean to us. We know how much it means to you. And they're gonna mean I'm a lot sure. to the other fans that yeah. see these boots and this robe. And if we can find the other butterfly robe to go with those boots, oh. I mean, it's everything. Yeah. Really the end goal of this whole thing is to get this memorabilia in front of fans. So at that point, it's kind of any means necessary to do so. Obviously, it'd be great to own everything, but being able to have a relationship with other people who have these great items and them being willing to loan some of their iconic pieces just helps 
to tell the story, and I, I wouldn't be able to do this without a lot of their help. It is important, I feel, for the fans to be able to share their appreciation, I'm sure, just like, you know, we all have for it and for his career. So that would definitely be something I would I would be into. Yeah, I would do that. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much. Definitely. I think the deal today is a win-win for both in that fans can see and appreciate these items, and I know at the end of the day they can arrive home uh, back to me safely, so I feel good about it. Now we just have to find the butterfly roll. <laughs> yeah, um, well, hopefully it won't take 15 years. No, hopefully. He's already been gone 25, so another 15 years, and uh, I might be too old for this job. <laughs>